This archived clip from Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. Join us live every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. Okay, we're about to introduce our next guest, who you may recognize as the, the CEO and founder of MakerBot. It's our friend, Mr. Bree Pettis. Hey, welcome Come on to the Bree. Come on in. Come on in. All right. Oh. Oh. And now there is a MakerBot on the table. Cool. Oh, wow. And it's printing out your head. All right. Oh, wow. A little squished head. <laughs> a squished head. Great. Thanks for coming on the show, Bree. Yeah, good to be here. Mm -hmm. Always a pleasure. Squished over. So we want to talk to you about the hardware. So we've already been yep. talking about modeling, a little bit of, of the making of the object, but we want to talk about what this thing can do, how it works. So you yes. give us a rundown? You got it. So this is uh, MakerBot 3D printer. This is the Thingamatic. This is our second machine with our seventh extruder and Replicator G. Actually, we just launched our 26th version of Replicator G. So we, we're, we're in the open source style of release early and often. Right. And I suppose if we're in the, in the fat style, it's early, often, and with rap music. <laughs> so yeah. we, we like to punch things out as fast as, whenever we innovate something, we're like, let's share it. That's the same thing that uh, Liz Arm does at St. Anne's School. She was on earlier talking about uh, talking about Tinkercad. She teaches kids, and then she shares what she does with everybody, making curriculum at curriculum.makerbot.com. Uh, Skimble, awesome. He makes these things. Michael Curry, yep, yep, Skimble. And then what does he do? He shares them. We do the same thing with the MakerBot. We make it, and then we print it. We, we don't just print them out. We, we share all the designs, and we make it so if you want to hack it, improve it, you can do it yourself. <laughs> you can, you guys see my resemblance in there? It's printing out. <laughs> That's my profile, my squished profile. Here we go, we should, uh, we should turn it around yeah, there we go. so we can get a good shot of you. There we go, I'll be right behind it here. Is can you see the resemblance? These, it's the ears, the ears. <laughs> <laughs> here, the ears that do it. It really does look like, I mean, it is it's you, it's a scan of your head. That is great. Oh, that's wow. so fun. You know, replication, you know, version control, as I like to say. <laughs> Right? Version control for you. So if the real Matt Richardson somehow gets damaged or in transit. We can rebuild him. <laughs> Great. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so I have, an, I have an older MakerBot. I have a cupcake. Yep. I'm very proud of it being in the top, in the first 50 yeah. bots. Early I'm days. put it in a plastic, I'm going to ask you to autograph it, put it in a bag and not open it for 100 years. <laughs> and, uh, but, I, but I'm really curious about, like, it was right before you started to get the heated build platform and right. then the automated build platform. What's that all about? So when we started out, we actually one of the hardest things about MakerBots when we started was finding something that you know heated up ABS would stick to, but then not permanently stick to. It would come off, and we had the hardest time. I think when you got your bot, we were still shipping it with uh, foam core. Yes. And uh -huh. you would like print I on the foam core to, to the acrylic. Yes. <laughs> You would print on the foam core, and then you would like it was disposable, which upset everybody. Uh -huh. So then we moved to the acrylic, which was a huge jump in technology. It was a scored acrylic, and it would stick to that, but it would it would shrink, and so you couldn't make very big things. And so then to battle shrinking, I had which a is shrinking what, problem. So this guy, I made this guy on my MakerBot. Oh yeah, this oh, cool. is this is a classic, awesome MakerBot design. Like when we saw this, we were like. Oh yeah. oh yeah, Becky's bringing it. So, but I had some warpage, I did, on the feet here. So I put some, some cardboard on the bottom of his feet to, because his heels, like, they curled up because they're kind yeah. of big. What happens is when you lay a piece of uh, ABS down, as it cools, it shrinks a just a teeny, 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 teeny percent. But if you do that layer by layer enough, it begins to curl up. And so to battle that, we've got the heated build platform. So if you touch this, you'll burn, well, you won't burn your finger, but you know, it's hot. You, you don't want to lick it or anything. So, uh, so that's my inclination, naturally. <laughs> see something. So that keeps it from shrinking and lets you make bigger things, which is, you know, what awesome. we all need in our lives, bigger things. So then bigger things, and then what? There's, a, I, there's an automated build platform, too. Yeah, so the automated build platform is we, we were like, OK, what would happen if we put, just put a conveyor belt on this? And so we're like, that's, you know, that's our style. We're like. What's a, what, what, this, is a, this is a silly idea. What if we actually did it? And then we tried it out, and we're like, OK, this is cool. So um, put the conveyor belt on there, and you can make thing after thing after thing after thing. That's great. How, how big is, can you make something with this? This is uh, 120 by 120. And if you do a few modifications, you can actually push the Z height, which is how tall it is, to 146 millimeters. So about uh, 5 by 5 by 6 inches. Okay. So, That's very cool. Someone wants to know how long it's taking to print Matt's head. 
I was told 45 minutes yep, for his squished head. Yes. The full size head takes like two hours. Right? Yeah. And big head. And it's interesting. <laughs> how long it takes is dependent on how long you print. And if, you, if, we, make your, if we made your head hollow, if we, right. then you know, it takes less time. But to print, to print Matt's excessive brains, it really it takes a lot longer. Density. Great. Well, I mean, like, also, like, this control panel is, is something I haven't oh, yeah, seen this before. Is, yeah, this is the way we roll. We're like, wouldn't it be cool if we had a control panel? So we made one, and you can see, actually, that it's printing Matt Richardson, and that, uh, and sure enough, the bed is at 107 degrees Celsius. Oh, wow. And the tool is printing it at 225 degrees Celsius, so you can monitor temperature. That's so nice. So this doesn't have to be hooked up to the computer while it's going. It, it's got the file in there. It's loaded in somehow. Yeah. Someone's asking how you get the designs into the MakerBot. So right. we talked about Replicator G. What do you do once you've set the right. file up? So uh, Michael Curry, Skimble, showed you what to do to take your model and turn it into G-code. G-code is just like XYZ coordinates and speed. So it says, go here, go here, go here, go here. And then you send that to the machine. You can either send it over USB, or you can put it on, a, on, a, uh, on an SD card. And if you do that, then you put it in there, and you can just, you don't even need to hook up your computer. You can just put it in there, you can find your you can um, navigate the, the system and go print, and it'll just go. Um, one of the other big things about the Thingomatic over the cupcake was end stops. Mm -hmm. And with the cupcake, you, had to, you have to dial down the nozzle, so I it's like exactly the right yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nice. And then you have to get it just so it's the right distance above the thing, and then you press go. With the Thingomatic, it's got end stops, so it actually goes home, finds home, and comes down and knows exactly where to go. So That's nice for just press push button printing, and I'm sure that Liz has a good time with the Thingomatic in her classroom, because I, I mean, I know the cupcakes, it's not, it's not really, it's not super easy. I don't think a third grader could do it. You know, the cupcake was the most innovative thing at the time, yeah. and yeah. We've just, we just keep going. So then what's next after the Thingomatic? What, what, where, what direction are you going in? Just better resolution, more features, or? Yeah, oh yeah, so we're always thinking about the next thing and we just launched the Mark 7 extruder. This is the biggest thing in extruders since <laughs> extruders. Okay. Uh, it's really tiny, uses a really tiny, uh, a really tiny NEMA 17 motor, and it's... The resolution almost looks indistinguishable from, the, to me, from the Dimension Machine, the commercial, the commercial really, really super expensive ABS printer that came out before any of these DIY guys started, I mean you. Yeah, I mean we wanted one of those printers, but we couldn't afford one, so we had to build this. And you know, our original printers, you had one of the early ones, they weren't as good. But now we're getting to the point where we're getting closer. And one of the things you can do with the Mark 7 is you can put two Mark 7s on there and you can print with two colors or two materials or, and Let's yeah. Let's show off a couple more objects. Maybe our close-up camera wants to see Let's some see. of these. Oh yeah, so we've got a cow here. Whoa. Here's another one. We got a cow's friend here. Hello. I think I ran over one of those racing the, oh. the um, cow battle. Ah. Here, check out this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and no, no, uh. <laughs> Thank you, All right, no boys. More. <laughs> What's the name of the artist who did this? Micah Ginsky. Micah Ginsky? Micah Ginsky did this. Now, this is super freaking awesome. He does these amazing paintings that often include like shadows over city landscapes. And so he took the idea of making a landscape, which if you look at it from the side, just looks like trees on a mountain with a little cabin. But if you turn it on its top, you can see that it's got the whole of a, of a person in there. Like, we can actually see Matt through the person. Yeah. Can we, there you go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so artists are using MakerBots now to do absurdly wonderful and, and things. I, I'm confident that painting is dead. The right. next, if you, yeah. I mean, if you want to be an innovative artist these days, you have to use the most innovative tools. Recently, that was like the computer. But the computer's kind of old. We've been using a computer to make art for like, how long? Oh, geez, 40 years. 30, 40 years. 40, okay. Okay. <laughs> the MakerBot, if you want to be fresh in the art scene, get a MakerBot, make some cool stuff, share it on Thingiverse, blow people's minds. Yeah. Totally. I mean, it was the coolest thing at the affordable art fair that we stopped by the, when, uh, to see. And, like, oh, yeah. and Micah was there showing off his work. And it was all just paintings. Because, I mean, when the economy goes up down, then galleries just return to like, art that, I guess, sells paintings. But it was boring, except for Micah's work with the cool 3D printing. Yeah. That's really where it's at. We have a couple questions. Yes, what do we got? Uh, can you estimate print times or learn from experience? Yes. 
When you slice it in Replicator G, it'll give you an estimated print time. It's pretty close. The algorithm is, is pretty good. So if it says 45 minutes, it's going to be like between 40 and 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. You're right. And I like this one. Can you make a MakerBot with a MakerBot? You know, I love that. That is so <laughs> meta. Uh, like the Cosby sweater. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then can that MakerBot make a mini MakerBot, which could make a mini? Yeah. So you're talking about like Adam Lee Small, but really you can, right? You can there actually. One, there's one there's, over, over there's there. a guy named Webka, W-E-B-C-A. If you go thingiverse.com slash Webka. I'll uh, type it in right now. He, he made a MakerBot on his MakerBot. And then with that MakerBot that he made on his MakerBot, he made another, his own 3D printer with his MakerBot and MakerBot. That's incredible. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. It just blew my mind. W-E-B-K-A? C-A. C-A. And there you go in the chat, guys. And um, yeah, check it out. That, this dude is awesome. Superstar of Thingiverse. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can print out a RepRap. RepRap is another 3D printer mm -hmm. that it's been a project. We actually got started with it before we got started with MakerBot. And the goal of RepRap is to make a self-replicating -re 3D printer. And uh, we decided that we wanted to have a, just a 3D printer that worked. And so we went with MakerBot. But at this point, RepRap has come a long way. Mm -hmm. And now you can make a RepRap on your MakerBot, and then that RepRap can make a RepRap, or it can make another MakerBot, and then, cool. like, it's sort of, you can do the like bunny like thing of like, okay, this bunny has babies and then its babies have babies. And it, it's kind of like that with RepRap. Someone right. was asking about support material for, what's the, what's the deal with that? I don't. So we're, work, we're working on right that. We're working on that right now. So with dual extrusion, you could print with ABS and you could print with uh, PVA, polyvinyl alcohol. And this is a material that smells like wood glue. Okay. And it's kind of like wood glue. It, it's a lot like wood glue actually. And because when you dump it in water, it, uh, oh, your head um, just finished. Yeah. Bing. <laughs> time. Here we go. Little like, Matt. Here we go. Hi. I'm little Matt. Um, we need to freaky. tape that yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, we got double-sided tape or anything. Oh, <laughs> that is freaky. Um, that is really nice. You want to put it in front of the close-up? Oh, yeah, yeah, do it. It's off. It there looks go. so good. Let me get right Hi, up in there. Hi, Matt. So I don't need to host the show anymore. I can really just like. You already did this with me yeah, on the yeah. show Hello. when we, when you guys were pitching. Just record my voice and just just move this around a little bit. There you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sounds good. No. Anyway. I like, I like meat mat better. <laughs> meat mat. Oh. We should 3D print you out of meat. <laughs> <laughs> They're made of meat. Right. Um, we're all made of meat. So oh, somebody else wanted to know how they can be an intern for MakerBot. Uh, you know, we our interns are. Awesome. They're like they're they're, I, they're amazing. I've MakerBot can't exist without interns, actually, and we pay interns. So, uh, what you do to become an intern is you live in New York City, you have free time, you send us an email that has your uh, that saying your interests and what your skills are. You can send that to hiring at makerbot.com or contact at makerbot.com, and we'll have you in and chat. And we have a, a lot of applicants, so um, be the awesomest. Be the yeah. awesome. Yes. I mean, well, of course, prove. if they're watching this show, I mean, yeah. like, cha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you gotten awesomeness. Have you gotten a printed resume, a MakerBot printed resume yet? We've gotten printed business cards. Okay. It's a good start. Yeah, that, that, that'll get you in the, your toe in the door, I think. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. Any other questions from the audience? Yeah, more questions. Anybody? Bacon printer? Somebody wants? Yeah, I would like. Yeah, I, I would like a yeah. bacon. Is there patent issues at all around Somebody this? Somebody keeps saying to Stratasys. Yeah, what's what's is there patent? So um, one of the nice things about 3D printing right now is that the original patents for 3D printing went out of, went out of, went out of date. You can only have a patent for 17 or 20 years depending on when you got the patent. And so the only reason we can do what we're doing is because those original patents are out of date. We have to be very careful not to step on anybody's right. toes because we don't, you know, if I had to go and be in court, I'd have to wear a tie. <laughs> This is not acceptable. Yeah. We can't go down that road. <laughs> if for that reason only. Yeah, yes. No ties. Can't wear a tie. You wore a tie on the last show. It looked good. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't have to force, no forcible wearing of ties yeah. is allowed. Yeah. 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 And so, so, so with the support material, then you dissolve it away, right? You right. Can... So you print it. So like in this one, we've got a zebra pattern. I'll put this up here in front of the thingamajigger. Switch to camera B. Hold there we go. We don't have a lot of light here, but you, you can you see. You move the MakerBot over a little, and you put it on the table, and you point the camera at the table. You'll oh, I'm you'll... breaking it. So there we go. So we've got, oh, 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 oh. It's a mirror image also. 
tricky business. Anyway, you. you can see it's black and white. This one is red and green. We've perfected two different types of materials. This is really fun. Cool. And um, we're working on PVA. The settings are a little bit tricky because the, 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 the temperature that PV, PVA melts at is different than ABS. So um, we're working on it. Everything points to it being possible. Right now, we've been really clear that the Mark 7 dual extrusion is experimental. We're open source. We're, in, we're, we're inviting our users to get this stuff and right with us, experiment with it and push the frontier and improve it. And I mean, and that's how you got you. That's how this happened in the first place, right? I mean, like the, the not the improvements upon the machine. Like you have enthusiastic users who, who like Charles Pax, who you you just invent end up hiring them. You know, yeah. Somebody comes up and they say, oh I gosh. made this awesome new extruder. Okay, you're good, hired. Work for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good way to intern to make improvements on the yeah. machine. So, and we're always looking to improve the machine, and a lot, of the, a lot of the things are used, I mean, one of the nice things about releasing under open source is we share it, you can improve on it, and part of the deal is that if you improve on it, you have to share it back to the whole community, and it turns out, you know, it's like the prisoner's dilemma, which is where you have two prisoners, and they're told, okay, if you rat each other out, if, if you rat your friend out, and he doesn't rat you out, you win, and if right. I rat you out, and you don't rat me out, I win. If we each rat each other out, we both lose. But if neither of us rat each other out, we win. So unfortunately, human nature, we all want to rat each other out. Okay. But if you think a little bit better, if you think loftier, we can help each other and the world is better. We can share and the future is a brighter place because we help each other out. It's like game theory. It's, it's that, that's what, exactly right. That's what I'm getting at. What's game that called? Theory. A non-zero sum game? game? Learned that in college. <laughs> so the idea is, you know, we open it up, you open it up, everybody wins. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. Cool.